Hi! In today's video, I want to dive into a question that I've been asking myself recently and I want you to ask yourself this question. Am I living an inspiring life? Now, what does this mean? When I dive deep into this concept, I ask myself, am I stepping into and am I moving and grooving through life and stepping into the fullness that I'm being called to step into? When I was put here, when I came to this planet, when I was birthed, am I living an inspiring life that God had in the design in the plan when I was conceived, when I was created. And I know it's really easy as a human being living this human experience to jump right to why we're not living an inspiring life because there's so much happening in the world, right? There's always something bad, there's always war, there's always something horrible, right? And so the concept of living an inspiring life can be really weird because if the majority of people on the planet or the norm is to be in suffering, is to be in a state of shame, is to be in a state of unworthiness, why would we want to live an inspiring life? Because that concept seems very um, foreign and it seems almost unattainable. Recently on Instagram, I saw a post from the actress KJ Smith and she said, who told you you can't have the thing that you want was it you? And this really stood out to me because it's so true. So many times in life, we will say to ourselves, we will convince ourselves that we are not able to live an inspiring life. We are not able to experience beauty and wonder and bliss because who said? And most of the time, it's from our own internal dialogue and our own internal belief system. Recently, I heard this concept, uh, well, it's two parts of a concept. It's kingdom consciousness and prodigal consciousness. So let's get into it. If you're anything like me growing up in the church or were raised around the Bible, there is a parable that Jesus spoke about, about the prodigal son. Now, we're gonna get into the story. So there is this wealthy father who has two sons and one of his sons is, you know, doing everything perfectly. He's the good child, yada, yada, perfect golden child, right? And then there's the other son who is rebellious and he basically is like, bump this. I don't want to be under my parents' household anymore. I'm going to go do my own thing. And so he takes his inheritance, he goes and he squanders it on liquor and girls and doing a bunch of nasty things. And this prodigal son finds himself sleeping with the pigs. He finds himself literally living in poverty, sleeping with animals in total slop. Okay, so he went from like an heir, an heiress, right? If you think about yourself, I'm a woman, so I'm an heiress. He went from that status of being so wealthy to poverty. But who told him to do this? This was something that he chose to do because of his own belief system. And one day when he was laying down with the pigs and his little piggy friends, oink, oink, you know, in the slop, he had a realization, why am I here? I don't have to do this. And so he packed up his little, you know, mud covered bags and decided to go back home. And so in the story, a messenger runs up to his father and says, oh my God, your prodigal son is coming back. We see him from afar, he's on the way home. And the father immediately says, kill the best, you know, like get, get the food ready, get the best fruit ready. We're gonna like have the best meal ever for my son because he's back. And the golden child, the one that was perfect, the one that stayed home, the one that did all the things, legit got upset. He was like, I'm sorry. You never brought out the best fruit for me. You never threw me a party. And he was salty, right? And the father says to the son that was perfect, he said, you always were here in my house. You were always here. You had access to everything every day. But your, your brother, he went away. He hasn't had access to this, but he's back now. And we are going to honor that. 
And when I think about the kingdom consciousness versus the prodigal consciousness, the prodigal son forgot his identity, okay? He felt so much shame and guilt from, wow, I had all of this. I left home and I squandered it. I squandered my opportunity. And so he put himself through such a terrible situation because of shame, because of the feeling of unworthiness. And at the end of the day, no one told him to do that, but he did that based off of his own belief about himself. When we have kingdom consciousness, when we know that we are a part of royalty, or when we know that we are something special, that the rules don't have to apply to us, we never put ourselves in situations where we're self-punishing or where we are staying in a state of shame to where we're sleeping with pigs. And a lot of us, because of shame, because of life circumstances, we choose to not live an inspiring life because we think that maybe we messed up once and we're undeserving. Maybe we messed up twice and we're undeserving. Maybe we are just constantly going through so much that we decide and we tell ourselves that we are not worthy of having the things, of having the life, of having the desires of our heart come to reality because of the things that we tell ourselves and we believe about ourselves. I love definitions. And so let's get into the definition of integrity. Integrity has two definitions. Number one is being honest and have a moral principle. But the second definition is amazing to me. The second definition of integrity is the state of being whole and undivided. And many times I've seen so many people who are positive and believe in God or believe in the universe. They'll be like, I'm abundant. Uh, the universe always works out for me. God has my back. I'm a daughter of the King, you know, all these things, right? But in the same day, they will go into a state of unworthiness, a state of shame, a state of it's never gonna happen to me. It's never gonna happen. I, nothing ever works out for me. And we're, they're swayed so quickly. And I'm speaking for myself, this has happened to me. When you are living in kingdom consciousness, you're living in integrity because no matter what happens, you are undivided. You are whole in your identity and you're whole in your belief system about who you truly are. No matter the circumstances, you know on a soul level who you are. But when you're living in that prodigal consciousness, you're out of integrity, you are divided. You are not whole in who your identity really is. You feel that you're not allowed to have access to what is already yours and what was given to you at birth because of your lineage, because of who you are. I heard this concept of the buffet of life and there's two types of people. So let's, let's paint a picture real quick. Let's say you go into a buffet. There are floors and aisles and all the different types of food. And let's say someone says, hey, uh, I already paid for you, have fun. An unworthy person, someone who feels unworthy, someone who feels shame, someone who feels that they are the prodigal son, they're living in prodigal consciousness, they will walk in and they'll say, you know, I'm just gonna have a little bit of salad with like maybe a few croutons and some water, thank you. And they'll sit in the corner and eat that. But somebody who understands that they are living in integrity, they understand that they are kingdom conscious, like they have a kingdom consciousness happening, they will walk in that buffet and they'll say, okay, bet, I'll have it all. I will put it all on my plate, the bread, the steak, the pizza, the pasta, the Chinese food, the Indian food, the curry, everything. And even if they can't finish it, it don't matter because it's a buffet. They're not worried about waste. They're not worried about overconsumption. They are just living in integrity in their identity of someone already paid for this. I get to have it all if I want. And I get to just have fun. So many times when it comes to living an inspiring life, we think it has to be this or that. It has to be, I, I messed up once, therefore I have to settle for breadcrumbs and living with pigs. I 
didn't work this out correctly because maybe I didn't have the right information. So I am destined to live this suffering, shame-filled, unworthy life. But when you get clear on who you are, when you are living in integrity and you are undivided in your identity and you are whole, and you know that you are a spiritual being living in a human body, having a human experience, you can't just settle for the prodigal mindset. You have to embrace the consciousness of kingdom mindset. And so the mentality that was this or that becomes this and that. Instead of, you know, I'll have a salad with croutons or I'll have the steak, it turns into I'll have the salad and the steak. When we get clear and remember who we truly are, life becomes inspiring. And the inspiration is not just for us, it is I truly believe when every single person on the planet is living an inspiring life and is clear about their identity and is living in integrity, they are creating a ripple effect that will start to inspire those around them to also live an inspiring life because it's contagious. Just like people living in suffering will start to become contagious and more people will be in suffering and will be like, oh, this is normal. But I believe that how beautiful would it be if we lived on a planet where the norm was living an inspired life? When desires pop in our heads, we have a dream, we see it as a preview of what God has already decided for us. Instead of a problem, oh, I don't know how that's gonna work out, we go into problem solving mode. Instead of saying, oh God, thank you so much for that preview, that means I'm already in it. That means that reality is here. I just need to move and take a step and another step and resources will start to come as I'm walking in integrity and in alignment. Support will start to come as I'm walking in integrity and in alignment. Re abundance, all of the things will start to come as I take integrity steps. Is that the word? Yeah. I believe everybody has a gift. I believe everyone has desires, has things that inspire them. God's design for each of us is perfect. We all have a purpose and that will look different for everybody. But if we stay in a prodigal consciousness, if we stay in a state of shame, a state of, a state of unworthiness, a state of looking for confirmation outside of ourselves, instead of being in integrity and saying, no, I know who I am, I know how it looks, but I'm choosing to head back home. I'm choosing to tap back into the kingdom that I'm a part of. I'm choosing to embrace my true identity because I know when I am in alignment and living in integrity, that is when miracles happen. That is when the rules no longer apply to me <laughs> and I get to be spoiled and I get to live a life that's full of abundance, that's full of synchronicities, that is full of inspiration. So I wanna encourage you, if you're watching this video, to think about what gifts you have inside of you that keep coming back and nagging at you and you're, you're seeing it as a problem, but I want to encourage you to see it as a preview of what God is trying to show you is possible of what God is trying to show you that is already here in a timeline, if you would just tap in, babe, I want you to think about what gifts you naturally have. And gifts don't always have to look like, oh, I know how to sing, or I know how to play the guitar, or I know how to do artwork, or I know how to you know, code. Gifts can look like, I know how to make people feel at home in my presence. I know how to make people laugh. I know how to provide the most gorgeous space, no matter what that looks like. When I touch people, they feel healed. When I pray for people, they feel a shift happen. A gift could also be knowledge, that you're super knowledgeable, that maybe you have an ability to listen. And when you start to really get down to what are my gifts, because I believe everyone has more than just one, ask yourself, are you sharing it in some way? Are you waking up and being a vessel that God is able to 
create through and work through so that you create a ripple effect with your embodiment and make the world a better place by your little corner of the world. I believe that God gives every single human being a gift, but when you receive it, when someone gives you a gift, you have to actually receive the gift first. I think about if I gave my niece or my nephews a gift and they looked at it and then they looked away and they're like, oh, life sucks. I'd be like, but I just gave you a gift. Do you want it or not? And I think a lot of times when we live in that prodigal mindset, that's what we do. When God gives us a desire, we look at it and we're like, oh, I don't have time for that right now. But I'm giving you a gift. So the first step is to think about what gifts have been given to you that you've been rejecting. Number two, are you ready to receive that gift? Are you ready to be a embodied individual who walks in integrity, who is not double-minded, who is not divided in their identity? And are you ready to stop falling asleep to the value that's already yours, to the truth that you are called with a purpose to make a difference for the better on this planet? Each of us have a unique medicine that will heal this place. And I believe each person, when they receive their gift and they walk in integrity, they are a puzzle piece to the bigger puzzle and tapestry that needs your gift to be completed. So I encourage you to maybe journal on the many gifts that you've been given in this life and ask yourself, am I surrendered to God's will, to the divine's will? of using this gift in integrity to make sure that I'm living an inspiring life. And as I live an inspiring life, I can inspire others to walk in their purpose and allow them to live an inspiring life as well. So that we just make beautiful ripple effects that are not ripple effects of prodigal consciousness, not ripple effects of shame, not ripple effects of unworthiness, but ripple effects of love, of integrity, of making a difference. And I'll leave you with this. I heard someone recently say that God created us in God's image, but many times we will remake God in our image and we will project onto God our limitations. And so whenever you get a desire drop in and you're like, oh, you make it a problem, I want you to ask yourself, am I projecting my own limitations onto God, onto this desire? Because that's not living in integrity. But when you get a download, when you get a desire, when you have this passion continuously beating on your heart, can you embrace it and say, oh, oh, it's there, it's there again. Instead of leaning into fear and unworthiness and shame, can you say, I will lean into love and instead of projecting my limitations, can I magnify the abundance that is God, magnify the abundance that is the universe? Because there is no lack unless we choose to tap into that timeline, which a lot of people do. And I think that's normal to do that. But when you really realize the gift and the power that you have within you, baby. <laughs> you can't go back. Now I'll leave you with this story because y'all know I love talking about the Bible, but I'll leave you with this story. So in Genesis in the Bible, it talks about how God gave dominion over everything to man and woman. And then if you fast forward to Matthew, where Jesus was led into the wilderness to literally be suffering for like 40 days, right? He was in the wilderness hungry, probably hangry, stressed out, whatever. He was going through it, okay? And in the story, the devil comes to Jesus and tells him to, oh, if you're hungry, turn this bread into, turn this stone into bread. And Jesus is like, I'm good, thanks, get away from me. And then he comes back again and he's like, oh, you should jump off this cliff and angels will catch you. And he's like, oh my God, bro, leave me alone. Then the third time the devil comes and says, hey, look at all of this land he shows him all of this land and, and all the kingdoms of the world and he says if you bow down to me i will give you dominion over all of this and you know what's crazy is jesus said back the heck up 
get out of my face. I'm hungry, I haven't eaten, I don't have time for your shenanigans. But what I realized in reading that is Jesus understood that as a human being, because people who believe that Jesus was the savior, he was still man, that he was already given dominion at the beginning of the story. And all of us have been given dominion over all of this. We get to decide what timeline we wanna choose. But a lot of times we will get out of integrity. We will get out of alignment. We will start hallucinating. I, I heard someone say that when you're thinking in fear, you are hallucinating. But when you're thinking in love, you are in alignment with God. And so many times we are desperate and we are suffering, which is normal as a human. You know, so many of us deal with suffering and, and shame and all these things. But instead of leaning into love and thinking from a place of love and integrity, we start hallucinating. We start seeing distortions and we will literally fall out of alignment. We will literally sell our souls. We will literally forget who we are because Jesus understood I, if I bowed, why would I bow down to you for something that's already mine? Why would I get out of alignment and out of integrity for something that's already mine? And so I wanna encourage you that anytime you feel the temptation to get out of integrity, to get out of alignment, to fall into fear, to fall into shame, to fall into unworthiness, I wanna encourage you that lean into love, stay in alignment with God, stay in integrity because you are an heir, you're an heiress, and you don't have to move and groove through life from a place of scarcity, from a place of fear, and from a place of shame. All the goodness, all the potential timelines where your desires are coming true, where you are making a difference on the planet, where you are living an inspiring life, you have access to that at any point and you can manifest whatever you want with God. Anyhow, sending you so much love. I encourage you to journal on what your gifts are. Ask yourself if you're using them, if you are living an inspiring life and ask yourself if you are truly going to start living in integrity and be surrendered to the divine's will for your life. I hope this video finds you well. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.